Hey everyone, Pratik Nayak here. And for those of you who know me, you know I'm a retoucher and I love processing my images. And Capture One is an integral part of that process. Today we're going to talk about Luma Range. And Luma Range is a function that most of you hopefully do know. And if you don't, that's okay too. I'm going to show you something that is going to be extremely important. And I'm so glad for Capture One 12 because Luma Range is now included with raw processing. And I keep saying the word, but what is it? So Luma range is luminosity range. And luminosity range is very similar to luminosity masking for people who use Photoshop for landscapes. And uh, it's really handy because you can take, for example, um, an exposure, like an increased exposure of a particular image, and then mask it in, say, like the shadows or in a different region that you might not be able to get otherwise. For example, let's say you're trying to control the shadow region of this image that was shot by Ostra, who's a really great photographer. And I love this image because it serves as a beautiful example of what we could do. Let's say we have the image here and the shadows have a nice fall off into the highlights. But what if we want to tweak it just a little bit where, you know, naturally what happens is on Capture 112 or any recent version of Capture One where you can tweak, say, like the shadow region. However, it doesn't really give you an idea of where it's going to fall off. And it does a good job usually. But what if you want to push this further into like the midtones or the highlights? You can't really do that. And so with Luma Range, you can combine a bunch of things like color work or exposure work. And in this case, we're going to talk about exposure. So the way this works, and I'll show you a visual example is first we would need to go to the Layers function. If you don't have it, you simply do right-click, Add Tools, and then go down to Layers, where you can see Layers. Make sure that you're either here on your Color tab, or Exposure tab, or you know if you have another tab you want to add, you're more than welcome to do so, or put them in any of these other tabs too. But just get to your Layers tab here, or Layers module or palette here. Then we want to go ahead and say new fill layer. I've actually pushed down and not clicked. I've pushed down without letting go and then clicked on new filled layer. The difference between just adding a layer like that and then going to new filled layer is that this filled layer over here is what we have here. This is basically like imagine Photoshop and you have an adjustment layer and you have a white mask attached to it. It's not black, so nothing is invisible. All the changes you make on this layer are visible like this. So let's say we want to take this exposure adjustment, but only mask it into the shadows and a little bit of the midtones, like right here, right? So we have a nice gradual fall off. Or maybe the opposite, maybe we want to darken it. Whatever your particular preferences, I want to use this as an example to show you how that works. So use your imagination, whatever you want to do. We could even do that for like contrast. In fact, that might not be a bad idea. Let's increase the exposure a little bit. Let's add some contrast together and maybe even desaturate some of the shadows to create some edgy look in a couple of seconds. Right now, everything is kind of being applied to, but we want to apply it to that region that we mentioned. I have clicked on Luma range here under my layers. And what pops up is basically a histogram. Let's uh, start from the basics here. I'm going to take this top part and put it all the way to the left. I'm going to take this guy here and bring it all the way to the right. What we have on the left-hand side is the shadows of the image. It's basically like your levels. Let's put the levels next to it. You can see here on the left-hand side, we have our shadows, which is the range 0. It defines the absolute shadow point here, the darkest point of the image. The right-hand side, we have 255, which is your highlight. And according to our levels, we don't have a ton of highlights here um, on the specific image. However, let's go ahead and say um, display mask. So this display mask option is really great because what we could also do is if we start bringing this bar over here, you can see that what happens is it starts cutting away at the image. It's red all the way here where it's 40 to 255. And then after that point where it starts getting to the deepest shadows, it starts making this little hole. And what that shows me is that you're basically activating like an on off switch on the layer itself. You're saying, please only work on the brightest point all the way to 
40, which is to this region, and anything that's darker than 40, it's not going to work in that area. And that's really cool because, like we mentioned, what if we only want it to work in, say, like the shadows or not in the highlights, right? Like not in the brightest parts of the image, like that maybe. Somewhere where you're selecting shadows and a little bit of the midtones. And so this is great. It cuts it out nicely, except, you know, it's really jagged, right? Because it stops at 123, and then after that 124, it's on again. That transition is not natural, and it's a bit too harsh. So what we need to do is feather it out. What if we had a feathering function? Well, the good news is we do. And the feathering function is actually down here. We can see this little arrow or a line. And the only thing you need to do here is extend that to the right and watch the image. You can see it starts feathering. It has a little bit of redness in a lower opacity going into the brighter, part, brighter parts all the way to 171. And then it opens up. Obviously, I'm saying these numbers, but I'm just looking at it visually, seeing what's happening here. And then I just push it back like that. And I can, if I push the top part like this, it carries a feather with me too. So now I can adjust until I get exactly what I'm looking for. Like that, I can increase my feather. And the display mask is really great. And the reason for this is in case you don't already have your exposure or whatever you're trying to do already set, this gives you a visual idea of what's happening. But for us, I think we don't even need the display mask because we already have our exposure set so we can kind of play and push as we see it until we see something that we like. So you can see here that now the shadows all the way to the midtones have brightened up quite quickly and we're just gonna increase the fall off till things look a little bit natural. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna increase, let's bring that a bit here and pull that a little bit more. So I fall off is nice and gradual and super soft. I really like that a lot. And let's turn the layer on and off here. You can see that the shadows brightened up nicely, even a little bit of that, that you know area here that I was talking about, that nice mid-tone going into those highlights, that's really good. Now we can play around even further. We can increase the contrast, reduce the contrast. We can increase or decrease the exposure. It's a really precise way of masking everything you visually are looking for. And then you can do an opposite mask if you wanted to, say of just the highlights, and perhaps change the white balance of the highlights. So the Luma range can be attached to anything that your heart desires, whether it's clarity, and I can even do that for clarity. You can see here that it does it just for that range of image. So maybe your highlights need more sharpening. So you can use a Luma range with say sharpening or clarity, and pretty much anything you, you can think of, which is, which is really fascinating. Let's take a look at another example here that we're going to use to balance out the shadows and highlights of this image. That's going to be really fun to do. And, and perhaps a little bit of the midtones too. I'm going to go ahead and add one fill layer. I'm going to call this one my shadows. Then I'll add another one. And oops, not, not a regular layer, guys, a new fill layer. Highlights. Now the first thing is let's go ahead and play with highlights. I'm going to drop my exposure down, generally speaking, like so. Um, I might even complement that by going and adding in a little bit of highlight recovery in the high dynamic range slider so we get a nice fall off highlights and all the way to the midtones too. So we'll start with our highlight function. And now if you remember what's what's what, um, by default, it starts at 235 here. And the problem with that is at 255 is where things are getting blown out. So it's not active at that area. So I'm going to bring this region back here. So you can see that's working. Now I'm going to take this guy, bring it all the way down. Like so. Just like that, I'm going to feather it. Let me temporarily say apply, okay? I'm not, I'm obviously not applying that as is. I just wanna say apply for a minute. I'm gonna bring the exposure back right there. There you go. 
So you can see a huge difference, right? Because now without it, you can see the highlights are spilling into the foreground here and there's also the dress and everything. And now the legs themselves, let's zoom in here. We've done some good work. I wanna show you what that looks like on the pixel level. You can see that the dress itself and the legs and the detail in the legs are coming back and it's such a really nice soft balance. And because of the luma range function, I'm getting really excited here, because of the luma range function, um, you're able to control and visually see, you know what, where should that fall off end? Where should it start? And as you modify and tweak, you get that exact, precise, refined balance you're looking for. And if you're really specific like I am, you know how important it is to get that delicate balance tack sharp on the image. And what I mean by tack sharp is, let's say for example on this image, right? You have that highlight and shadow transition. Sometimes when that balance is not right visually, the image is thrown off. And in this example, you know, I really want to emphasize that and show you that even with something that can be really complex, this is possible. Because normally what I would do is try to like dodge and burn it. And there's no way to get a refined mask that precise. This is so beautiful and subtle. And the benefit is you're using the raw data. When you use the raw data, you're able to tweak things further than you would say like in Photoshop where you don't have the raw data when you open the file and work on a PSD or TIFF. It's just not there as it is with this. Now let's go back down to our shadows and I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit here. Maybe like 0.52, not too much. I'll go to my Luma range. Next, I'm gonna turn off my highlights. I'm gonna make sure that my highlights and shadows are fully um, calculated for. Let me bring up the range that I'm generally looking for. Something like that maybe looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and tweak the fall off like so let me bring this back now so we have a nice super nice gradual fall off here like that i think that looks really really cool a nice feathered fall off all the way past the midtones going fading into the highlights just a little bit i'll say apply let me turn off my shadows to show you you can see those shadows just brighten them nicely and now I can even increase the contrast if I want to, or decrease the contrast. And here's something really cool that I want to show you. Now we have more of like a flatter, flatter image going on here. If I turn off the highlights and shadows, you can see that balance. Whoa, that was a huge difference. That highlight and shadow balance. What I can also do next is I can add another fill layer and I can say contrast. And now I can easily add just a little bit more contrast. I wanted to, or it decreased the exposure overall to get that nice kick in that frame. And that's the beauty of this. Let me go and show you what the before looked like as well. I'm going to say um, new variant here. Here's the after. Here's the before. And just like that, I'm able to kind of control, you know, the shadows and highlight regions quite nicely. Um, and really add that contrast. So in a complex situation like this, it, it really emphasizes the power of luminosity masks and luma range function with this. And we haven't even gone into anything crazy advanced like color grading with luma ranges or what have you. We can even go in at another luma range, say just for the midtones. We can mask out anything on top of that too if we wanted it to. Um, so there's a bunch of things we could do with luma ranges, but I really hope this showed you a little bit about what you could do with Luma ranges because there's a ton of things like, for example, um, let's say I go ahead and apply this. We can also go into say like our highlights and perhaps if we didn't want it to be masked on the model, then we'd simply go ahead and, you know, play around. Not that I would do that right now, but I would just go ahead and erase the mask from the model, just to give you an idea of what's possible. So even if you don't like something, it's easy for you to modify the mask once it's already applied. So you can combine Luma ranges with the manual masking capabilities and you get something really nice. And don't forget, you also have 
your hardness, size, flow, and opacity. So you don't have to be so abrasive like you saw me do here. And I think that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and show you what I have here. And so with layers, you can control different luminosity ranges so you don't have to do everything in one go. Well, I hope this tutorial and insight showed you what is possible with the Luma range function. I'm really excited to see what people do with this. And I know based on the amount of information our raw files have these days in the high dynamic range, especially in the phase one files and many other files, this is something that came at the right time that I know that I am very, very excited about.